Okay, guys, we are having a great time today. We are in Kara and Marcus's house. We have Kara freaking Brotman. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a goddess here. Yes. I'm just a regular girl. <laughs> well, we love having you on. So this is part two. We're doing a Q&A with all of your questions. So we're going to hop right into it. Okay. And the last video, if you missed it, I'll link it down below. I'll put it at the end of this video as well. But we're going to start with the hair again. Everybody's okay. asking more about the hair. And we'll expand a little bit more from the other video. But the first question they're asking about CMOS and does it really increase collagen I guess that's not to do with absolutely hair absolutely it does yeah yeah so what are the benefits of sea moss how long ago did you learn about it and why should we incorporate sea moss well I've always known sea vegetables are just they are very important even though people think that uh, the mercury in the ocean it, like I don't know affects it but in fact, it does the opposite. But the sea moss, it, it binds the heavy metals, mm -hmm. you know, so it, you're not getting any of that when you eat it. And I think the sea vegetables are so beneficial. You get all these nutrients from them, right? And that's why and people get certain nutrients from the fish, right? Because they eat so many of these things, like the algae and all the different things in the right. sea, right? That's why they have that, right? Where people are like, you need to eat the fish because it has the DHA, it has this, but it's because they're eating those things, right? Uh, yeah, again, think? Think? again, yeah. It's like people say, you need to eat you know meat and and cow and this to get your nutrients when you have the plants you yeah. know you could get it from there and it's the same thing it's the fish or the sea vegetables you know mm -hmm. And, and you can feel alive and amazing and get it from the plants or feel a different way getting it from the fish and the meat but I have exactly. to ask too if you want to share when was the last time you had animal product do you remember it was, it must have been like that hamburger that was so memorable yeah, to me uh, 25 ago. years ago. It's crazy. That's so 25 years. No dead animals going in here. Not at and all. And look at you. Or their fluids. <laughs> and I would say like, Without a doubt, I think the most gorgeous 55-year-old I've ever met. You are so sweet. So but look, that's like a testimony, right? It is, it is. But it's like, why would I have an animal product when my body is absolutely fine with, you know, a, plants? And if I want cheese, there's so many good vegan cheeses. Mm -hmm. Not that I would want any because, I don't know, I'm just... It, you know what I think for health and aging... What slows, what I believe is slows down the aging process, at least for me. Well, and if it works for me, it works for everybody. It is the type of food you eat. I don't eat anything packaged, nothing. The only thing I, I, I eat that comes in its own packaging would be- Like vegan cheese? Olive yeah. oil. I don't even do the vegan well, you cheese. Make your own too, right? Yeah, we make our own cheese. Even vegan cheese has some stuff in it. It's got, I don't exactly know, but I know it's got some stuff in it that I don't like. Um, but the only thing I eat that's packaged is kimchi and olive oil and tofu. And I think that's it. Everything else comes, you know, either in the bin, the nuts and, and seeds, you know, and legumes. It's just when you're eating food like this, your body, I believe, slows down. It's not working, 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 and putting all this undue pressure on your body. And when it gets this pressure, it's aging. You're aging, you're shortening your telomeres when your body is going through all this, you know, trying to do something and figure out what this mess is that you just put in your body. What are these chemicals? What kind of sugar is this? Trans fat, oh my God, all that ages you. So if you're coming from somebody like me who's eating like plant-based, 99% plant-based and a little tofu and beans, I mean, it's inevitable. You're going to rapidly slow down your aging process. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, something else, um, I do look old sometimes. I am almost 60, so I don't want to look like I'm 30 when I'm 70. Yeah. You know, I want some wrinkles on my face. I think that looks weird, like, you know, somebody Martha Stewart's age without yeah. one wrinkle. True. Or, or you know, these women, uh, Paris Hilton's mother, I just saw a picture of her. She had not one wrinkle on her. That looks weird. I agree. And I think that is... That is the age when wrinkles, okay, now I can deal with wrinkles. But right now, I'm in my 50s. I don't have to deal, I shouldn't have to be dealing with wrinkles 
Right now, 50-year-old women in different countries that eat healthier, they look the same as me. There's okay. What, sorry to interrupt, but what about the sun? A lot of people think we need to stay out of the sun. And what about the sun? Do you think we should well, avoid the sun or not? This is where Marcus and I disagree. Marcus loves the sun. Um, but I think the sun is great if you're, if you're eating right and doing everything right. Sure, maybe the sun is good for you. Personally, me, I refuse to have my sun in the face. I tan my body, but I always cover my face, and I've always been like that from a oh. young age, I all, especially my eyes. And I noticed that it's helping me because a lot of women, even younger than me, have you know, problems under their under here. And I, I truly believe it was because I've always protected my eyes from the sun. And my brother eats a lot of sugar. He's addicted to honey and he's addicted to the sun. And he's a year younger than me. And he, is he raw or no? He is 100% raw. Wow. And he has these deep, deep wrinkles, mm. like deep. You know that you have some fine lines. These are deep lines. And I know it is from combination from the sun and from all that sweetener. Wow. Okay. I got to stay away from the sweets and I got to watch my face. I love the sun too. I'm like, Marcus, I love it. I don't put anything on. I just spend the summers in Florida. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. We got to learn a little bit more about the hair routine. People were asking too. We talked a little bit about it in the last video, mm -hmm. but maybe like, what's your hair care routine? How much do you wash it? Do you cut it? And people were asking, um, do you color it? Yeah. And what do you use? Okay. So this is what I use to color my hair. I just happen to have a bottle of it in my purse. <laughs> <laughs> not sponsored though. Even. <laughs> it isn't sponsored, but I love this product. My God, it's called Nature Tint. And um, it is 92% natural derived ingredients. It has no ammonia, olive oil, acid, uh, meadow flower seed oil, quinoa. It is just so amazing. And also, um, I only use it <laughs> I only use it around my frame and I do it maybe once every two, three months. So this is this is what I use. And whenever women ask me what I use, I always I can't say enough about this product. It's vegan, forever, cruelty free. Just an amazing product. I should get some sort of coupon code or something <laughs> yeah. for saying that. You'll sell a lot of those. Where do you get that and but, how long have you been using it? Oh, that's right. Uh, you could get it at Whole Foods or at your natural grocers. I've been using it for 10 years. But what, what really happened recently to um, my hair growth just started, I don't know, three months ago. I noticed that it just did a major spurt. And it was because of a few things I said, okay, I need my hair. Just, it just was so short all my life. So cutting it every once or twice a year, I said, forget that, I'm gonna stop cutting it. That helped. Um, and then putting oil, um, hair oils at the tips of my, just on the ends helped tremendously. But that sea moss, getting it from the inside. Um, so I started forcing myself to take two tablespoons a day and just, I didn't want to do it in food. I, I'm it's kind of busy, you know, I don't have time to be, okay, now let me put it in that. Now, are you, am I sure I'm getting two tablespoons if I eat this much cheese? It's just so much easier if I do two tablespoons plain and it doesn't taste good to me like that, but that's okay. It's that's working. my, it, it worked, unbelievable. I could not believe how long my hair, this is the longest it's ever been in my entire life. And I just love it. And love it. yeah, and I wash it once every three days, you know. And uh, I, I do, I heard that if you get blowouts, you know, it's good, for, actually good for your hair because you don't have to, you know, style it and you can go three, four, five days without getting it, um, getting it washed the next time. But, um, any foods you think like contribute to healthy hair? And I know keeping your hair out of the sun is important. Your mm, hair, really? your hair does not like the sun. Okay. No, um, but those foods, just the foods oh, yeah. that are loaded with nutrients, those nutrient dense foods are going to work in your body. You know, I, I read sometimes that this body part does this and it's working here and it, this is working so hard constantly and we don't even know it and you need these cells for this. And all these different bodily functions that we're, we're going through every second of our lives. 
Now, don't you think you need to give it nutrient dense foods or some sort of healthy foods to, you know, fuel make, up properly? Yeah, to make all that work properly. Mm -hmm. So, again, this is where healthy foods comes in. And if you don't know how to eat right, I'll tell you how not to eat. Don't eat anything in a restaurant, especially a fast food restaurant. And uh, don't go, don't buy anything in conventional grocery stores, packaged stuff in conventional grocery stores. Those conventional grocery stores, they all have their organic sections now. Thank God. And sometimes it's, it's less expensive than whole paycheck. Because that's <laughs> yeah, I went to that whole paycheck in Vegas. It's pretty, you know what, now and then though it's pretty good because they have the best produce, but it's expensive. Oh. Do you guys grow any of your own food? No, but I have a lady who's coming uh, Monday. She's, um, she's a gardener. Mm -hmm. She's going to start my, uh, help me with a vegetable garden. Cool. And she, I am going to um, film it too. She asked me if good. I wanted to and I said, are you kidding? I was <laughs> going to ask you if I could. <laughs> yeah. You know, for my viewers, they wanted yeah. to know and know the journey and everything that it, it entails and so she said yes you absolutely can fill me so I'm very excited about starting my own vegetable garden because when I was at John Kohler's you mentioned you you saw John yesterday his garden looks incredible oh so you saw his garden no but I've oh. seen, he was at our place but I've seen photos and it's so he oh. I feel like it's very therapeutic gardening oh yes and the food is just so alive when you pick it and then go make your dinner oh, right away right? yes oh my god that garden it's, it's orgasmic for mm -hmm. me just to see it mm -hmm. and I know you feel the same way yeah, I am. One day, I think I'm going to grow some food. Well, okay. Somebody said Marcus and Kara love them. They both look so young. Do they contribute this to their diet slash lifestyle? If yes, name three to five things, either food or other, that they both do daily to achieve such youthfulness. And you're both such a positive force for our raw vegan lifestyle. Well, um, you have to be in love and calm. <laughs> this helps, you know. Good advice. Yeah. Um, he he just makes my world. Oh, I just love Aww, him so. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I and then, know. Ten years later, that's amazing. How do you guys keep the love alive? You, it, it's easy because he just. I don't. That's a good question. How do you keep it alive? You I just guess it just happens effortlessly with you guys. It's, it does. You just have to pick somebody that you just just love, and. Um, also, I, I love the way he cares for me, you know, and that makes me love him even more. Mm -hmm. If you care for somebody and, and they're receptive, they're a good person, they don't take advantage of you, then they act accordingly, you know, and it's like such good synergy going on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Do you guys do like date nights every week or like, I, like that? I don't like date nights. No. Yeah. He, he asks me, so I force myself, oh, okay, I'll go. <laughs> but that is not what I need to, you know, keep our, you know, whatever. I, I do enjoy our Sundays together because, you know, we just have all day together. And, we're, and you guys don't work on Sundays? Just no, that, that I have him all to myself on Sunday. And um, I don't know, you just have to find somebody that, you know, makes you feel wonderful. You know, and if you're not, you know, I've been with I've been with a guy here and there that and I'm like, wow, he makes me feel miserable. I could be miserable. I'd rather be miserable and alone mm -hmm. than miserable with this person. You know, it's no way to live. Not at all. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, as far as looking young goes, um, exercise, absolutely so important. You, it, you I, I just see myself afterward after a, a good workout and I just look like just so refreshed and just like I slept for 15 hours. It's so good for you. Um, and the good food. When you eat processed foods and, you know, just the wrong foods, it does age you mm -hmm. drastically. So it's all about slowing down the aging process. And you do cardio and weightlifting in the gym. Like what's your routine when you get there? Right. I, actually, I just do a lot of stretching and then mm -hmm. I jump straight into lifting because I feel like I do cardio at home because I'm just so active here. There's always yeah. so much to do, but I am gaining a little weight though. Remember I told you I was 116. Mm -hmm. I'm 136 now. Are you? Yes. So you look good. I don't. Feel I good. do. I look good. I'm like, wow. I'm like a big girl. No, <laughs> I yeah, look at myself. Look, yeah. Okay. And I'm like, I. I it's I, a muscle, I, though, right? Because you gain more weight with the muscle, yeah. right? Yeah. 
But that I know too. It's, I, I don't know. It's that butt. It's all that muscle <laughs> in your butt. Your butt looks <laughs> good. I got to get that butt. Okay. Somebody said, how do you maintain a low body fat percentage <laughs> there that we were kind of just talking about weight, but what are some things you do now that you didn't do back then to age gracefully? So I guess two questions. Um, I always did, uh, try and do everything I could to age gracefully. Um, I remember I was drinking a little bit. Were you? Yes, I, I drank. When, like every day? Like? No, not every day, but when I would go out with friends, I would drink wine and I would notice, like I said, you know, when- On your face. Yes, when you get, when you reach a certain age, things you do to yourself, you notice immediately, good and bad. And boy, I noticed as like the, the hours wore on, I'm like, oh my God, I can totally see wrinkles coming in my face. And so absolutely no alcohol. I will not touch it now. It's like poison. And even if we're toasting or something, I've been in that position before and I just take my uh, a, a jar of water, a bottled water, and I use that as my, and nobody pressures me. I don't think anybody would pressure no. me. That's mean. I mean, that's not, not a right friend yeah, to, to drink. So I it's absolutely, toxic. oh my God, it's poison. I've known people that, drink, smoke cigarettes, smoke pot, and do cocaine, right? The ones that died are the drinkers. Those are the ones that, I, I don't know anybody else that, di di not, not, I'm not promoting smoking dr or those other things, yeah. but the drinking, it's the worst. It's ethanol. I mean, your body just, you hates it. You immediately puke it up. I think it's the worst too. What do you think if people say, well, in moderation, live a little, why be so extreme, have a glass with dinner? What oh. do you think about that? I think it's just poison, even it's in one glass. The worst. I look around in restaurants and every single person is drinking and they all look totally unhealthy. But yeah, when we do go out to restaurants, it's so funny. Oh, no water, no bread, <laughs> no, uh, uh, no wine menu, no cocktail menu. <laughs> I know you must love us. <laughs> no, that's good. You guys still go out and stuff, but yeah. yeah. And Marcus never was a drinker either. Right? He didn't ever touch a, a glass. Never. Ever. I wish I could say ever. that. That's amazing. Wow. Okay. Well, someone is saying, oh, they had the good fortune to work with you at your restaurant. Your recipes are simple and brilliant. Those were in LA, you were saying, right? Either in LA or San Francisco. Yeah. And somebody said, okay, my favorite raw vegan woman out there. So inspiring question because she successfully raised a child as a vegan, at least not sure if raw. What does she advise other moms to do having the same results? Like some cornerstones for raising vegan children, not only from a food point of view, but also maybe a bit of parenting because her son is so well adjusted and wonderful. Well, I always told her him the the consequences of eating and I did kind of take a little advantage that I was older than him and he was a vulnerable little sponge mm -hmm. so I always would tell him when he was little this is bad food you know they, they're so easily you know brainwashable children <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> this will make you ugly. This will do this. You know, this will make you feel like horrible. You know, and I, I always, do that sometimes too. And I'm like, is that bad? I'm telling no. them this will, okay. As long good. as it's with <laughs> the right thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, um, and so he knows, you know, okay, in moderation, it's not good for me. And he always knew that. And it's so funny. I remember he was little, he was like 13 and I was in Whole Foods once and I'm like, I love him so much. I'm going to go to the, the, you know, the sweets and find some treat to buy yeah. him. And I'm looking at all the goodies they have. And I look and I'm looking at the ingredients and I'm like, oh, if I really loved him, I would not buy him any of this. So I didn't, I wouldn't buy him anything. Any of those. Just extreme. No. What about like, did he, did you homeschool him or did he go to school? No, he what did about, go to how did you school, school because I think it's like a lot of I would birthday make him, parties and stuff. I'd make him a sandwiches, but you know, he did eat. He, I remember when he was like three or four, uh, my girlfriend said, Oh, she had him for the morning. She said, Oh my God. She goes, the waitress asked if he could, uh, gave him a lollipop and he turned to me and he goes, Dana, can I not I'm not supposed to. What do you think? She was, Carol, he was so cute. I can't believe a child asked if he could have a lollipop. And I'm like, oh, I trained him well. But, you know, yeah. she, um, he, it, again, it's that brainwashing. But he did eat, you know, he has eaten foods, you know, that he wasn't supposed to. And he could feel the difference. And, um, you know, I, I, he was, I didn't have him strict. It, it, it's hard. 
but at least he wasn't eating a lot of that garbage. I made him his own sandwiches in school. I can't believe the way fast food restaurants have just taken over schools. Yeah, me too. It's crazy. Und that means that every single one, every single child that goes to school in America is eating that food. It's so wrong. It's so crazy to me. And then they wonder, like, with the kids' behaviors and things oh, like that, it's like, yeah. look what you're feeding them. Yeah. Yeah. It's what pretty bad in Canada where we are, too. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Somebody was asking, love Kara Marcus, do they get health insurance or is their lifestyle their health insurance? That's a good question. I always said, yes. <clears throat> I always said my, my farmer's market is my health insurance. But I recently got health insurance. Yeah. Just in case I read something that was so freaky. This, I, I love, my three favorite subjects are health, relationships, and life after death, because I totally believe there's something after death. And I was reading this book, um, this woman was talking about how she died in, after her car accident, but what really got me was she got into a horrendous car accident and they called a surgeon, he was on the golf course, and the guy said, they said, we need you here. We have this woman in need. And the guy, the surgeon said, does she have health insurance? No. All right, I'm going back to golfing. And, you know, I, I just, it, that just worried me. Yeah, I you understand know, cause that. You know, because it's not just about health. You know, you could get into a car accident. You I could agree. break a leg. You, you know, didn't have I mean, it for years? You just I got it? I never, wow. never had health insurance in my life. Wow. That's why I'm just like thinking, maybe it's, yeah, I am a little older, you know, maybe, I don't know, and wiser. Maybe I should get that just in case. Do so you watch the near-death experiences on YouTube? I watch those all the time. I love them. I love them. Oh. Like with the life review and all the similarities and all the stories and stuff. Yes, and I read a book about, uh, that a neurosurgeon wrote, uh, the afterlife. I've I seen his that. story. I read his book too. Like yes. And he said, my God, this is, he experienced it for the first time. I mean, he experienced it firsthand. And he said, my God, when he came out of it, he goes, my God, this is everything we were taught not to believe in. I just experienced. And he was atheist before. Yeah. Oh, was he? Yeah, he was. Oh. Remember, if you're talking about the same person, yeah. Yeah. I remember. I love those I stories. I do believe he Especially was. Especially if I'm having a hard time. When I uh, watch those stories, they just make me feel better. Uh, you know? And there was this one, this woman, she she died, and she's up in heaven or whatever. And she said, <laughs> they said, you have to go back. And I, she said she was in such in love and awe with heaven. And she said, I don't want to. And they told her, you have children. They yeah. were small children. She said, they'll be fine. I've heard Let a lot me of stories stay. <laughs> they'll be okay. I'm, I'm staying here. It shows you how good it is. When we get Can to you side. believe that? Yeah. You know, it's like when we're born, we're like, for nine months, we're in this little loving, you know, soft water. And, and then all of a sudden, we're like being born and we're like, oh my God, no. And here we are now. We're in this beautiful life, and I feel like that could be what what death is like. We're like, oh no, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Oh my God, what is this? You and know. So you wake up, and that's way more real than here. Oh yes, it, it is. It's like yeah, it's like the world on steroids. It's just everything is. I enjoy life, but I'm excited for that one day. <laughs> Get over there too, where it's like, I think it's only good at the other side. And it's not yeah, like the bad and the challenges. Exactly. So one day that'll be a bit exactly. of a relief because we go through a lot down here. Yeah, all this silly stuff that we go on through down here. Yeah, it's not there. And I remember one of those YouTube videos, Life After Death. It was that they were talking about how beautiful and wonderful it is. And one of the comments, a guy wrote, I can't wait to die. <laughs> <laughs> People probably think it's crazy, but I get I it. Like, I get it. Okay, people were saying, oh, they can't wait because you guys don't do much on other platforms. I haven't, I was thinking on the way here, I haven't seen you in another interview. You don't do many no. interviews, right? So this is so special. It is so special. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I don't know. I just have this, like, I, I vibed with you. Yeah. And now I know why, because you're a Virgo. Yeah, there you go. And I, all my girlfriends are Libra's Virgos, most of them. I love that. I don't know why we, and my father was a Virgo, and he had four children, and 
I was his favorite. I mean, <laughs> it, it's something about Virgos and Sagittarians. Yeah, when's your birthday? Uh, December 21st. Oh, nice. Oh, close to Christmas. Yes. Nice, cool. Okay, and somebody was saying, curious, is she eating a little bit of cooked food sometimes or only raw? You do eat some cooked food. 90% raw food. I mean, 90%, I need that cooked food because I need my muscles to grow. And I don't know. I know some people have good luck on building muscle on a completely 100% raw food diet. I don't, and my arms are naturally toothpicks. Like, we're not born, everybody is born, they all have their own problems, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and nobody is born perfect, and um, I know with me, um, I, I'm not proportioned right. I, I'm much heavier from the waist down and from the waist up. I, I'd always say when I was a teenager, I'm like, I'm anorexic from the waist up and obese from the waist down. <laughs> you look in balance. But, well, it's hard, but, you know, I do need a lot of, you know, it's hard to look in balance, you know? I mean, my arms were so skinny just a few months ago, and they're so skinny, people say, oh, does she have an eating disorder? But they don't look at the whole package. You know, if my legs were super, if my legs were skinny, I, I would not feel good. But I do have some meaty. If you showed them that butt more on social media, they would not think that. And I think as we get older too, it's important, especially as women, but for everybody to be in the gym, getting like using the muscles, right? Absolutely. And mm -hmm. especially for women as we get older, because our bones, you know, we're losing our density there, and. You just want to do everything you can to make sure that you're not going to be like my poor parents, you know, when they were older, mm -hmm. you know, they lacked, diet, you know, any type of exercise whatsoever and stretching. And wow. I think stretching is so important, too. And they're stiff. And I don't get my father was stiff. And I'm at their age now where their bodies started to give out. I'm at their age now where wow. their bodies were giving out. And it's like, again, you know, I'm looking at- At 55, their bodies were? Well, they, they weren't dying at 55. But they were starting to really decline. Yeah, their, their quality of life is, was shit. My mother, starting at 40, the chronic back pain, and she's 70 now. 30 years of chronic back pain? No one should live like that, you know? No, but but she does because of the stuff she does. And there's some people that just will not change. And then there's a lot of people like the viewers out there that want to change and want to do better for their bodies. And I commend you for that. That's so wonderful. I, I don't understand. My mother, I was over at her house a few months ago, and she goes, look at my body. Look at how, how, what a good figure I have. And it's true. It's okay. And I said, well, great. Now, why don't we add some, um, like, five-pound barbells? You, dumbbells, you could just go like that. And she goes, absolutely not. Why? Why would she yeah. say absolutely not? And it was like, no. It was like I just told her something awful. Let's go play in traffic or something. <laughs> I can't yeah. believe she was so against that. Wow. And also, though, she smoked cigarettes. And I told her, if you smoke cigarettes, it's going to affect, you know, your back and cause a lot of pain mm -hmm. everywhere, especially at her age. You know, you've got to stop smoking cigarettes. Oh my God. I think a lot of people think too, as you get older, this is just what happens, the pain or this and that. Exactly. And I don't know sometimes if they realize these things do it or if they just want to ignore it, like the cigarettes and the stuff. Like when smokers, do they realize they must, right? Or they just ignore it? Like connecting that that's causing them the problems, you know? I think they do maybe connect <clears throat> it, but it's so hard for them not to. It's just, they don't understand. I, 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 I know it's easy for me to say, but I, I know this that you just need to suffer. You have to say, okay, I need to make mm -hmm. uh, mark my calendar for four to six weeks where I'm going to suffer. And it's going to be for the my betterment. You know, you come out so much better, stronger, but you gotta just, so it's gonna be hard. And that, but then once you're out on the other side, it's oh so good. God. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, somebody said, I love Kara. Ask her about her beauty routines and products she uses. So any other products that come to mind that you use or anything? Um, yeah, I, I love this one brand. It, it's, uh, I forget the name of it. Oh my <laughs> God, okay. I could put links down. Yeah, I'll give you the sure. links. I'll put it below. But um, as far as lotion goes, you know, I just always, I used to use coconut butter um, and now I use 
a coconut, coconut oil, sorry. But now I just use um, Trilogy. It, I don't know, just I found this nice brand in, in natural grocers of lotion and I like the thick. I use night cream for day cream and everything. So um, yeah, and just- mm -hmm. Any other routines, like nightly routine or? Um, you know, I just, just wash my face and put that on. Oh, and um, uh, <laughs> I was going to say be magic, but no. What is it? Be magic? Yeah. Oh. But a lot of people are like, that's not <laughs> vegan. It's vegan, but I know it, it, it's, oh, it's just so yeah. lovely. Yeah. Oh my God. And that's really thick too. And I'm surprised I don't have zits or blackheads from having so much product on my face, but it's good product. My, my skin obviously loves it. Yeah, it's good. Okay, and the next question is a good one. So somebody said, how does she forgive and live with a pure heart? That's good, especially as we get older, not holding on to things. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you work on forgiveness? Well, I don't know. I just try and, for, for what? People that have wronged me? Yeah, yeah. Aw. I, like not holding on to it, you know? Oh yeah. That, well, again, that's where meditation comes into play, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it really clears your mind. It allows you to just go through, you know, your motions in a healthy manner. That's where meditation comes in. Um, but you know, like people that have wronged me, like my mother, we've had a talk and she said, well, you know, honey, I'm doing everything I can now, you know, to make things right. So can you please not hold such a grudge? Aw, she did. <laughs> yeah. And then do you feel like you could let things go? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, it, I did, you know, and I, she is my mother. Like she created me. So it's kind of a little easier yeah. to go through that. Everyone's doing the best they can and who knows what she's gone through in her life. And yeah, stuff, that's you know? true too. Well, that's sweet. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Um, okay, someone was asking if you've ever dealt with incontinence. Is that when you can't hold it? I think that's it? with your bladder, right? Oh, yeah. Like, I know my sister has um, after her pregnancy. Mm -hmm, me too, a little bit. And yeah. she got the mesh, but now did. I hear that's really bad. I've heard that too. I mean, I heard it's really bad. Wow. Uh, I don't have that, but I've heard of people getting that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've, heard it's, I've heard it's bad too. But I would just think that uh, Kegel exercises would help with that. Yeah, that's what I've heard. But yeah, I'm sorry, I can't address that because I don't. I'm not familiar with, with that. Yeah, and somebody said we want more re more recipes. We're gonna do a recipe next. But I was just oh, yes. thinking, what's your favorite recipe? What's your go-to recipe? Oh, what do you mean to like make anything for that comes to mind? That's like your favorite or your current go-to. Look, for me, I eat super simple. <laughs> and like right now, I'm just in a phase where. Oh, I just get so excited. I'm like, okay, hurry up and make your salad so that you can eat your dessert. <laughs> and my dessert is basically a half of a watermelon cut up into pieces. Then I put that cream made from the nuts. Mm -hmm. I pour that on and then I put buckwheat crackers. I scrunch that up and then I load it with cacao nibs. That is my heaven on earth. I just love it. And I make a big old bowl. <laughs> Love it. It's just, it's just a, a quirk of mine. You know, I just love these little things I make. Um, good. But yeah, for me, it's mainly uh, the, uh, stew, the uh, just ve vegetables, broth, vegetable, you know, soup and those salads. Yeah. And did you, you're such a good raw food chef, like one of the best out there, if not the best. Thank did you, you train yourself or did you go for training? Were you no. just all self-taught? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But you know, I, Working in a restaurant, you know, people said, how did you invent, how did you create all these recipes? And we're like, trust me, if you're standing behind a deli case that's just stocked with all these amazing ingredients, you know, you're going to start figuring things out. The ravioli was a complete accident, mm -hmm. you know, that I discovered my mom, I, I was making sushi and I, I soaked too many walnuts and I, I, I told my mom, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to, all these walnuts are going to spoil now that they're soaked. And she said, oh honey, put them in the freezer. I'm like, oh my God, that's genius. So <laughs> yeah. I put them in the freezer and I took them out when I needed them one night and I'm putting them through the juicer and I'm like, oh my God, they're mush. Usually they're firm. Well, they're mush that the freezer changed their consistency anyways. And I'm looking at that and I'm like, 
That is like a ricotta cheese consistency. So I took garlic and peppercorns and salt, mixed it up. I'm like, oh my God, that, cha that tasted just like a filling for ravioli. Wow. So all I needed was the wrapper and boom, we had ravioli. And so I went to the farmer's market and asked for subtle flavored turnips and, and I found one and it was just amazing. What, what an amazing like find, you know, yeah. you just feel so good. So yeah, you know, I wasn't self-taught, but I did have some, you know, cooking, you know, sort of my father and my mother, you know, I had a little bit of, you know, some training, but yeah. You know, if you're in the kitchen after a while, anything you do for a little bit of time, you get great at. So if you don't know what you're doing, just get yourself in the kitchen and start rolling noris, you know, fill it up with different things. You can even make a salad and throw it in a nori wrapper, you know, and it's fun. Yeah. And what's Marcus's favorite dish that you make? Do you make all his food or he makes some stuff? Too? Most of his food. Yeah. Yes. Um, he, what, he just has a ton of favorites. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> he gets on his favorites. Yeah. yeah, okay, and somebody was saying, I'm curious why Marcus and Kara really discourage, discourage juicing fruit. Can you ask them about this? Is this because it's with a higher, with a higher fat diet that's not good? Or what are your thoughts on lower fat diets? Well, it's just when you remove the sugar from its fruit, now your liver is working over time trying to process that because the fiber in the fruit helps slow down the absorption of sugar. And when you remove the fiber, you're just starting all these problems in the body and we just wanna avoid that. You know, um, we do love fruit, but when it's attached. And you, you guys know. never do fruit juice, right? I, I mean, no, it's yeah. so sweet. Like, yeah, never. And what- But what, what opportunity w would we have to do fruit juice unless we're doing it ourselves? And then I would never even do that. Yeah, and what percentage fruit would you say that you eat, like in your diet? Like are you, you would say you're lower fruit, right? Yeah, but in the summertime, I, I try, try and take advantage. But fruit is fruit of the gods. It's food of the gods. That is so good for you. I am not anti-fruit whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But um, just as long as it's intact, you Makes know. Makes sense. <laughs> but I, I would not eat fruit, drink fruit juice. But um, I even feel guilty putting uh, apple through my green juice. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna love it. But I'm sure that's fine, you know, so. a little bit of apple to make it. But I do, I, I put apple in Marcus's, but what I actually prefer in mine is the lemon. The lemon will suffice for me. And what's your favorite green juice recipe? Like I, that you make? I don't really have any. I just put a bunch of the yeah. most disgusting things in there. I, I mean, disgusting as in like the most powerful, you know, collard greens, asparagus, you know, it's just the stuff it, and it comes out tasting so bad, but I've always told my son, you know, it's like the things that taste bad and things we need to be eating, you know? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Like more of the bitter things. things yeah, like yeah. Of course, it's, when I was in the airport, a couple of weeks ago, I'm looking at all the sweets like at, in Starbucks and all the people, grown-ups waiting in line. And the sweets were just packaged so beautifully. And I'm looking at the, the grown-ups. These used to be little kids. Now they're grown-ups away from their mommies. And they're like, I think I'll have that. You know, they're not. And it's like, I, I just, Oh my God, I cannot believe, I, I tell myself, I am so glad that I am not fooled. They can't fool me like that, mm -hmm. you know? Me it's too, it's true. Good. And the next question, what does Kara eat in a day? <laughs> <laughs> so they all, everybody always wants to know, what do you eat in a day? Well, I do have a few videos like that out yeah. and they're great. I have to send, I'll, I'll leave a link for the, my most recent one. Yeah, perfect. But, and I just did a video about staples, my staples that I have. And basically it's just, a, you know, I eat whatever I have around. So I always make sure I have tons of buckwheat going. So that I can sprinkle on my salad or crunkle in my salad and my fruit salad, savory salad. Or if I'm really hungry, I'll make up a guacamole and I'll use that as chips mm -hmm. or make, use the pizza crusts. I mean, use the crusts as a pizza those uh, buckwheat crusts. And I know it's not like a real pizza crust, but it's a nice base. And then you could put hummus on there and you know, just your toppings and make a nice pizza. But my, my I eat very simple. 
And it's basically, now that we're still in summer, at least here in Vegas, I still have access to some good fruits at the fruit farmer's market, but it is a fruit salad, huge fruit salad in the morning. And then I come home and I do my big salad with everything in mm -hmm. there that I need. Mm -hmm. You know, that's my, my salad is the vehicle for all my nutrients that I need, basically. Even the um, uh, sea vegetables I put in there too. It's just easier that way. Mm -hmm. And do you drink a lot of water in the day? Yes. Yeah. Especially uh, more, less on non-workout days, but on workout days, I take advantage, you mm -hmm. know, cause you know how like it's hard to drink water. Yeah. Well, I, I bring two or three th pitchers of water and I take advantage. I'm like every move, like every five minutes, I'm chugging and chugging and then I'm in the bathroom making 20 trips to the bathroom after the gym, but <laughs> yeah. that's okay. Yeah. You're cleansing everything out. Exactly. Do you do the saunas too, or like red light therapy? Or I like any don't. No. I should. Again, here we go with the time factor. I, yeah. I or use... the hot and cold? No, right? No. Unless like I hurt myself, I'll do mm -hmm. hot and cold. Oh, really? Hmm. Yes. I do but... smoothies too. Oh, that's oh, right. Do oh, I too? do. I do a huge smoothie every day. Okay. Yeah. What do you put in there? Yeah. The powders and stuff? Like, yes. Yeah. yeah. And peanut butter and, and then everything goes in there. I just, everything. Um, Chlorella tabs, yeah, uh, cranberries, a uh, fr little frozen banana, but um, hemp seeds, aloe vera. You know, again, that's another vehicle. Like the salad is, to me, this is another vehicle to get all these other nutrients in you. You mm -hmm. know, is a smoothie. Mm -hmm. So it's such a good way, and it's it is. simple. Eat, and I it's agree. simple. You it's know. easy, especially when you're busy doing things. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, they say, like I had a nutritionist on, she said we're supposed to chew our food like 50 times to like the consistency of baby food. Yes. And just, it's almost like the smoothies are just pre-digested and so much easier to But absorb. you still have to do that though. You still should chew your smoothie. Really? Yes, it's wow. still not totally. Huh. You're okay, you, well, you're also, because when you're chewing, also, um, you're getting those pre-digestive pre pre yeah, enzymes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Good point. Okay. And somebody said, I know Kara's been on a fitness journey. I'm about to turn 53 and I don't have an exercise routine. How should I start? What has she learned? Right. Well, just the, it's the lifting and it's really, e that's easy too. If you have a few barbells, dumbbells, mm -hmm. and it is good to try and work out all your parts of your body. That's where cross training comes in handy. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not there yet, cross training, but um, I do try and work out, uh, you know, as many parts of my body as I can. But um, the the weight training with a couple barbells. I'm talking barbells? Dumbbells. 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 Yeah, dumbbells. dumbbells. Yeah, yeah. And you guys go to a gym, you were saying, right? Not at home? Yeah, it, 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 it could be done at home, I'm sure. But at the gym, you're just, I don't know. I go there and I'm inspired. I see all the other people working so hard, you know, mm -hmm. sculpting yeah. and that. And it c inspires me too. It motivates you more. Being yeah, it does. I feel like. Yeah, totally. And what music do you listen to? Do you listen to music when you're working out? Uh, I listen to whatever music's yeah. in the gym. Oh, you do? Yeah, they have, they have good music oh, there. Oh, they do? Yeah. Okay. And somebody said, any life philosophies that you repeat to yourself or live by? Like any philosophies? Well, you know, um, just just to be, you know, as good as possible in every way mm -hmm. and, you know, teach and sh help as many people. I feel like I've been in the health food industry all my life and I, I'm in a position where I can help other people. So that's always very important to me. Um, and yeah. Yeah, and they were asking too, would you guys film more vlogs and more what I eat in a day? So do you think you'll do more of those? Yeah, well, you know, it's just what I eat in a day, it, it, I can only say how what I eat in a day so many times. <laughs> True, it's people like this. still love it over and over. But I just recently filmed a video of my staples, you know, that I need in the kitchen. Good. Yeah, so that, that could be helpful. But yeah, I can't wait to get in the kitchen with you. Yeah, me too. I'm excited. I can't wait to try your food. I'm so excited. And somebody said they say, they always say fruit has too much sugar. I know we talked a little bit on camera about the juices, fruit uh -huh. juices, but <clears throat> even fruit, you think it has too much sugar. People need to watch like 50% fruit in their diet or like something like that. You think? Are, are people really in a position to have all this fruit? Because I want to know where they're getting all this fruit because I'm having such a hard time finding good fruit. 
But again, it's if it's with its fiber, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you think it's important to eat like really ripe fruit? Yes. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, they say you're supposed to eat bananas. They they're more nutritious when they're you know, have those dark spots, but that's when the sugar is so, now it's through the roof. The yeah. sugar's really concentrated the older a banana gets. And I'm like, if you're gonna go for the nutrients in the banana when it's like that, why don't you just eat an apple or something and avoid all that sugar? Yeah. You but, eat more greens than fruit. But I do eat more, way more greens than fruit. Okay. It's yeah. just a lot easier. Greens are in season, you know, all, all summer. I mean, all, all winter, yeah. greens are in season. It's harder with fruit. But if you're gonna have fruit, and you want good fruit in season, um, frozen fruit is, is frozen ripe. It's already ripe, so sticking with frozen organic fruit is good. Okay, okay, and somebody said they would love to get your gourmet book. Your book is amazing, I'll link that down below too. And tips on how they manage to set up a raw vegan restaurant. So maybe if somebody's thinking about doing that or setting up a business. Right. Yeah. Um, well, it's so much easier to set up a raw vegan restaurant than it is a cooked restaurant. It was so funny when we opened ours and it was 1995 and the health inspector came and he goes, okay, wh where's your hood? I don't <laughs> yeah. see a hood. And they go, oh, we don't need a hood. He goes, no, you need a hood. And we're like, but were we, we're not cooking anything. He goes, what do you mean you're not cooking anything? I mean, it was so far-fetched. I don't think, he's never been in a restaurant like this before, <laughs> yeah, actually, sure this was his first it. time. It was so easy. So that hood, boom, was already, and not, and those hoods can be so expensive. Basically, what, when you, what you need for a raw food restaurant, it's so simple. You need counter space and outlets, you mm -hmm. know, it's so awesome. But, um, and was it hard to keep business with a restaurant like that? Because I know most of the world doesn't eat that way. Did you find You know what? With, well, with our first restaurant, it was unheard of. Nobody knew what the hell it was. This lady came in, she says, it's all right. Is a what the pasta? They thought pasta was just hard set on their table. But, um, what happened was with us, we didn't advertise what, what, how we became famous before People Magazine did an article on us. Cause actually the first one was uh, the local newspaper, San Francisco Chronicle did an article mm -hmm. on us. And he said, uh, it was really great. It said, I remember the quote said, in a city known for innovative cooking, raw beats them all. He was really impressed and they called and he said, uh, this is Michael Bauer from the San Francisco Chronicle. I'm doing an article on you. And I said, oh my God, when are you coming? And he goes, <laughs> I already came. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, please God, let it have been good. And he left us an amazing review. And after that, People Magazine did an article because they piggybacked on that. And after the People article came out, it just flooded after that, everybody. Because journalists like to you know, report on new and upcoming exciting trends, and th this was not a trend before. But what I noticed was, so before all those articles, we were nothing, nobody knew who we were. But mm -hmm. what I noticed was it was word of mouth. And this lady had come in once to the restaurant and she said, you know, I was in Rainbow Grocers. It's a, it's a health grocery store in San Francisco. She goes, I was in Rainbow Grocers and I saw the produce man and I, I said, how's it going? He goes, oh, how's it going with you? And he said, you know, I was at this raw food restaurant that just opened up on 9th and Lincoln. It was pretty amazing food. I'm like, oh, okay. okay. So then I go down to a florist. I'm like, how's it going, honey? Oh, good. Oh, well, let me tell you, <laughs> I was at this restaurant. It just opened up 9th and Lincoln. It's raw food. And she goes, I said that two times in one day, I've got to go see you. So that's why I'm here. And I'm like, oh my God, word of mouth. Wow. It just spread like wildfire. All of our customers were word of mouth. Cause you know, when you eat something, again, it was a new restaurant. People are like, oh my God, you gotta try this. You know, when you see, discover something new, you wanna yeah. share it with your friends. So it's really good product then. And you had celebrities in there too, right? Uh, very, all of them. Yeah. Every single one. You, you name them, they came. And but, then, so how long did you have those restaurants? Um, well, the one in San Francisco was like four or five years. Mm -hmm. And then we gave it to Brian Lucas, mm -hmm. I think. He took it over. Mm -hmm. And then we moved over to Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. And then that was um, about 10, 15 years. Wow. And then 
uh, I don't know, I just left, you know, because I wanted to do my own thing. Oh, that's right. And, and then I opened my own in uh, Pleasant Hill in California. Had that for a while. Then I came out here. I, I gave that to my sister. I came out here, was going to do another one. And then I met Marcus. And I said, listen, I'm on my way to open another restaurant in, in, in L.A. And he said, why don't you, instead of cooking for 200 people a night, why don't you teach the world how to cook? And I'm like, what do you have in mind? That's when he said, you know, let's do, you know, come with me on my YouTube channel and show people how to create this food. And I was, love it. It's great. Let's do it. Perfect match. It was a perfect match. And yeah. it's true. You can reach so many more people that way. Yes. You know? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And somebody said, what emotional meditation, positive affirmation type of videos do you recommend? Do you have some favorites? Many of us have been through trauma and could use ideas where to start to heal emotionally. Oh, yeah, I do. Uh, so I'll send the links, okay? okay. Yeah. Yeah, you got to look underneath for those links, but I do have a few. Yeah, okay, perfect. Then I'll, I can add those. And... Uh, Emotional trauma. Uh, I, Dr. Dyer's book was just so amazing for me when I was going through something. Okay. Um, I forgot what the name of it was. Uh, uh, I can try find it or get it from you after yeah. and link it below. Okay. And somebody said, I love Kara. She has the body of a fit 20 year old in her 50s. And you do. I can say in person. You absolutely do. And okay, what do you eat in a day? We talked about that. Can you ask her opinion of olive oil or any oils and fats for over 50s? Do you, you consume some oils, right? Yeah, yeah, I try and stick with only olive oil because I think the other ones just... Olive oil, it, the pure extra virgin olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, that one isn't processed. And... Um, I, I, and I also do uh, toasted sesame seed oil. I like the toasted better than the regular, mm -hmm. and I don't think toasted is gonna kill me. So it, it gives, it adds so much a better flavor than the raw toasted sesame oil. But um, yeah, I, I think oils are very dangerous. I try and stay away from them. They're scary. I don't know much about them, and I don't, I, I don't want yeah, I don't deal with oils. Mm -hmm. Only extra virgin olive oil and occasionally Not flax toasted. oil or anything? Oh, flax Sometimes oil. Sometimes I put flax oil in I my do. smoothies. But yes, the flax oil is okay. very... Yeah, those I oils. Okay, right? I, think that, I think it's very beneficial. I think you have the DHA, like, right? They're, yes. Uh, yeah. I actually use that in my smoothie. Me too, yeah. And it has a nice flavor. Oh, does it? I think. I don't you think don't so. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Um, somebody said, could you please ask her view? We talked a little bit about this in the podcast interview about uh, breast implant illness. If she thinks that a person who has undergone breast augmentation with implants could lessen their chance of getting breast implant illness by eating fully raw. I think so. I totally, I mean, we, we said that, yes. Yeah. And also, you know, if you, if you research it, I was looking at it a, a couple months ago, how many women actually have breast implant illness, and it's tiny. It, wow. you know, I thought it was a lot more. Me too. But then everyone I know who has them, when I talk to them, they're like, I haven't had any problems. Yeah. So the like, majority, the majority of women don't. But, you know, you have to be eating healthy, not just for to avoid that, to avoid a lot of things. But I just think that if you're eating a high nutrient dense diet, your chances of getting breast implant illness and other illnesses are really low. Yeah. I think so. And somebody said, if you need to lose weight and tone up, do you eliminate all fats like nuts and seeds, avocados? What foods to consume? Is coconut milk, almond milk um, okay if one needs to lose weight? Yeah, but why don't they just make their own milk? Mm -hmm. But I, th I do think you need to make your own milk because I don't like what they're putting the in. store milks, yeah. Yeah, I don't like what they're putting in store milks. Plus, there's, there's got to be a preservative or something in there. Yeah, that's what I think sometimes when I see them. Yeah, they're in a box. Some of them say they're so clean and stuff. I'm like, well, how does this last? So exactly. Long? <laughs> I don't exactly. get it. Exactly. But, um. What, what did she Okay, expect? and she has to any advice for cold climate to stay on raw? But you're not, you've never lived in a cold climate, have you? Right, no. But when you do, you just add a little heat to your foods, you know, again, the, the peppers, the hot peppers. And. What I noticed living in a cold climate when I lived in San Francisco was life was miserable until I realized, okay, girl, you need to wake up and spend 40 minutes or half an hour to 40 minutes getting your um, temperature higher, mm -hmm. meaning jogging or exercising or race walking or doing something to warm your body up because it was so cold in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And it, boy, what a difference. Um, 
yeah, so if you're, get your body temperature up there. And also, you know, you could gently warm things. Like I have, you know, the lasagna I'm, I want to make with you. Mm -hmm. You have it in your dehydrator. And also these foods, regular food, regular cooked food, by the time you eat it, the temperature is already down to that of a raw food meal. You know, you're not going to eat piping hot food. So I think it's just something in some people's minds when they say, oh my God, but raw food is cold. And in a cold climate, how does that work? It's not really cold. Mm -hmm. Raw food is not served cold. True. And it's basically the same temperature as regular food is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good tips. And could you ask Kara what her diet was when pregnant? Is her son Rob vegan? We talked about that in the other video, and or maybe in this one. And your thoughts, tips, re comfort on comfort eating. Oh, my my thought. I mean, my diet when I was pregnant was awful. It was really? terrible. It was. <laughs> it was again. This was we weren't living in the internet phase in YouTube. I had yeah. no, nothing to tell me, help me. I thought, oh my God, I get to eat for two. Because <laughs> mind you, all my life I've always loved food. I just knew that, you know, I need to restrict it. I noticed, oh wow, if I don't eat that much, my tummy's flatter. I noticed this as a teen, you know? Yeah. And so I'm like, I, I started to watch what I eat and watch my the uh, the amount of food I eat. When when I was really young and um, uh, when I heard I was learned I was pregnant, I was like, oh my God, it's the green light. I can eat whatever I want now. But um, it's, I was eating bad food. You uh, were you I, vegan or were you? I, I wasn't vegan. Yeah. I was making these pies from my mom would make and they did have milk in them and eggs and sugar. It was banana cream pies and chocolate cream pies. I would make those pies, make them for the ladies at work, you know, would bring them in. Um, but uh, I'm telling you, I would never, I worked at an insurance agency in my early 20s and I would go into work and I, I'd always know that there was a woman's birthday because nobody would be at their desk. They'd all be in the cafeteria because a woman, you'd bring in a bunch mm -hmm. of donuts mm -hmm. or cakes for your birthday. Well, I was like, okay, I'm different. For my birthday, I'm bringing in a chocolate cream pie and a vanilla cream pie or banana cream pie. Yeah. They were cooked and it wasn't vegan, but it was natural ingredients. You know, it wasn't store-bought with all those preservatives and trans fats and all that. And my cakes, my pies were a hit, but, and I'm telling you something else I did. I, I ate candy bars. I think my, chi my childhood came back to me, you yeah, know, when, where I wasn't and allowed okay. to eat this and I'm eating candy bars and I gained 50 pounds. Wow. That's a lot, huh? Did you have an okay pregnancy? Did you I, feel good? Perfect. Good. It was perfect. And did you have a hospital birth or home birth? It was hospital. My first was hospital. It was such a bad experience. Everybody's got to do what's right for them. But for me, it was, I did the second at I home. I had the home birth. And did you take the epidural? I did not take the epidural. Oh, good. Wow. I was afraid because they told me that number one, it could make you paralyzed. And number two, you can't feel yourself push. No. And I'm like, well, I need, I want to feel myself push. And I remember I asked for a little more painkiller. I'm like, oh my God, please, it hurts so bad. Can I have a little bit more? And she goes, well, the baby's heartbeat is a little hot, rapid right now. And I'm like, okay, never mind. Let's forget it. I'm fine, you know. It yeah. was the most painful thing in the, the world. The most painful thing in the world. <laughs> but you yeah. forget it. I did it too. This, I did one hospital with the epidural, one at home without the epidural. And it's such a huge difference. Like at home without the epidural. Yeah. Because, yeah, you're right. You don't feel anything. You're pushing. You tear more. Not to give too much information. It's just a, it's a mess. And they're, like, for me at the hospital, they're rushing it. They break yeah. my water. Like, oh. they just, it's, like, felt for me at, my, at the hospital. I did it. felt very transactional and not, yeah. like, yeah. and that's not what you want. That's not what right. I want when my baby's coming into this world, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. I wished I would have done a home birth because yeah. I didn't like the, I, I wished he would have been with me immediately, you mm -hmm. know? They take them away. They put chemicals in their eyes. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I don't know either. And okay, somebody said, okay, we asked that question. Do, oh yeah, the comfort food. We talked about that. Now that she changed her diet to put on muscle, does she still recommend her? What does Chara eat, Kara eat in a day for weight loss? Or is there something else she would tweak from the past video? 
No, I, in fact, I'm, I'm about to start looking at what I eat for weight loss because if I hit 140, I, I, mean, I don't want to go any further than 140. So I'm, what, how long a time period has it been from the 116 or whatever to the 136? It's only been a month. What? Really? Yeah. I, you know, I get, I lost that 50 pounds yeah. in four months. Mm -hmm. And I heard a surgeon or a professional say that's not good to lose so much weight so fast, but... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't pregnant anymore, so I didn't have that green light to eat whatever I wanted. So I, you know, slowed down my eating habits. I cut everything in half or did I cut it in quarters? But at, at any rate, it worked. And every time somebody had the baby, I'd be working out, working out, working out, working out, you know? Yeah. And then got to come get the baby. All right. And then I incorporated him in my workout, you know, and mm -hmm. doing squats and this and that. But that was my main goal after I had the baby was to get rid of this weight. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Okay. And somebody said they're asking about the makeup you use. Do you, are you conscious about what makeup you buy or? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, there's this brand. Um, I order from them online. They're completely forever vegan. It's a wonderful brand. And uh, Kat Von D is the other one I use. Oh, cool. She's vegan too. Yeah, yeah she I is. love her stuff. She's cool. Me too. And somebody said, have you ever faced any vitamin deficiencies? I don't think so, right? No, I just got my blood work done. Oh. And the only thing he said, he goes, your cholesterol is too high. And I go, what? And he goes, you're good cholesterol. He yeah. goes, there's bad cholesterol and good cholesterol and your good cholesterol's too high. And if we don't bring that down, then it's gonna start affecting your other, your bad cholesterol. So I just thought that's funny. My cholesterol, my good cholesterol's too high. Yeah. But uh, no, yeah. And, and a girlfriend said that she's in the sun all the time. Mm -hmm. They go to the lakes and all that. Uh, they go to the ocean every other week, every week. And she said she got her blood work done, and she said that she was so surprised to learn that she's low in vitamin D. Wow, what? Yeah. And huh. again, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I was thinking maybe it's the, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, I'm glad. I mean, how often do you check your blood work? I just checked it for the first time in my life. This was <laughs> No way. Yeah. I wow. never had a physical. Wow. Ever. So I figured, well, I guess I'm going to do all this. Yeah, I don't know. I'm glad it was good. B12, everything was good? Yes, everything was amazing. Amazing, so I love that. I guess I'm doing right. And I do yeah. try and get out in the sun every day. Uh, gardening is very important. But if anything, to just sit out there for 15 minutes, because mm -hmm. I'd rather get that natural vitamin D than from a pill. But mm -hmm. then I'm also started to cut mushrooms and throw them out there in the sun too, because I heard that's a really good way to get vitamin D in through the mushrooms and then into you. Mm -hmm. I heard that too. And somebody said, any tips for reducing cravings of old food habits? Well, if, if, if you, I, I don't know, um, maybe tell yourself if you learn what those foods are doing to you, I think that should motivate you, you know, and not keep them in the house. You can't have the bad foods in the house. It's amazing. It's night and day. If you have those foods that you crave, if they're not in the house, then you're not going to eat them. And so. you probably don't crave them at all anymore, right? Like I know for me, if people are over, there's things in my house like pizza or something. Like mm -hmm. I don't even crave it looking at it. Right. Do, would you still crave a pizza? If you Absolutely saw not. Yeah, because the, there's, there's re uh, replicas, there's substitutes for all of that. There's healthy alternatives. So, you know, if I wanted something sweet, I would just make my fruit salad, you know, and put all that sweet stuff in there, you know, rather than have a candy bar. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you just educate yourself on number one, why, you know, how your the food that you're craving, just the, how bad it is for you, that should motivate you to not eat it. And put your, you know, just make sure you have good stuff in your house, mm -hmm. not keep that, all that bad stuff out of your house. If you can't eat it, you know, responsibly, then keep it out of your house. And I don't know, I, I, you can't eat a pizza responsibly or eat ice cream responsibly. It shouldn't even be in your house. True, it shouldn't be in your body. That's your real house. I That's like, true you know. too. But if it's not in your house, boy, you will just, and, and you know what else? Uh, if you want to eat healthy, there's one ingredient that is so important that is the most best ingredient to eat healthy that you need. And that is called hunger. <laughs> because when you're hungry, you'll eat 
anything. True. So even a, a big, if you don't like kale salads, you're gonna be like, oh my God, that looks so good to me now. So yeah, you know, f try fasting all day, you know, and then when it's time to eat, make that your most healthiest, you know, as healthy as possible of a meal. Yeah, have you guys ever done, you guys have done one meal a day, right? Like. Yes. Yeah. You're proponents of that? You think that works? I think that's time? great. But if you're trying to work out though, I mean, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's such a catch 22. You know, you want to, you want to intermittent fast and to eat this one meal a day because it's so good for your body, but then you need to work out too, because that's very important for your body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and somebody said, have you faced gas in the stomach when eat, when we eat raw food, this is what occurs. So I guess they're saying maybe they're new to raw foods yeah. and they're dealing with the gas. So yeah. I think that can take time, don't you think? Yeah. For some people to transition and get used it to the- It does take time and gut. transition, yeah. And the pain, you get cr cramps in your stomach from, it's, I, th I believe it's your body's in shock. Like, oh my God, what is this good food? And I don't know, it's so shocking to the body because we've been eating this crap food for so long. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and somebody said, ask Kara if she tracks how much fat she eats, as I have seen some of her videos and she eats a fair amount of fat, but do you track it really? I don't no, think so, right? I don't. Or calories? No, no, right? Me too. No, but I just found out the coconut cult yogurt that I love, that I put on top of my um, fruit salad sometimes. It, it's a give. I'm like, okay, do I put the nut cheese or the cheese made from, I don't like saying nut cheese, the cheese made <laughs> from nuts? the cream made from nuts on my um, salad or do I put the coconut yogurt? And I'm like, I'll just put both. Oh my God, I found out it's got so much fat in it, the wow. coconut yogurt. I believe it, a lot of fat would be in there. Yeah. Yes. So I'm like, oh my dear Lord, I better chill out on the coconut yogurt. I, and that's, that's, I think that's the first time I ever looked at a fat content. Yeah. Yeah, you know what, what gauges me is looking at my stomach. <laughs> and I remember I was in junior high and I told my girlfriend, she's wearing a half shirt, and I said, she had a roll. And I said, you know, if you don't eat for two days, you'll get rid of that roll. And she goes, forget that, I need my food. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, I would fast, you know. Yeah. That, I would to get rid of that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, my stomach it was important to me, you know. Yeah, I uh, it. Growing up. Yeah, you wanna feel good, look good. And somebody was saying uh, they wish you, they could meet you, so lucky, wish you guys, wish you would come to Chicago and speak. Do you guys ever speak anymore? You guys used to speak a bit, right? And yeah, do some I events? Used to. Yeah. Because I think I've seen I would some like to. Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys enjoy speaking in front of like a group of people like that? I love like watching live. Marcus speak. He's oh God. He's I good could, at it. Oh, he's so amazing. Yes. He's amazing. I personally don't like it, but I I, I like to share what what I know and what's helped what's worked for me. So I have to get out of that and have it. Yeah. Okay. And somebody said, please ask her if night flashes are under control. Do you have night? Oh yeah. I think you were yeah, saying a little bit before. To. And does she get anxiety when her peri and menopausal started? No. When did you go through menopause? If you don't mind uh, me asking. Like 48. 48. Yeah. And, and did you have a bunch of like, you yes. know, stuff? Yeah, you did. I, I did. And, and I just let it happen to me, you know, cause mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. So I'm not going to do anything if I don't know what to do. And I'm not going to go out there and seek professional advice because they are going to throw you on all this stuff that I saw my mother go through when I was younger and she's, and all her friends, I mean, with the horse urine and all that. And then she had girlfriends that are dropping dead of heart attacks, you know, because the doctors are trying to intervene, sticking their nose into our bodies. Is that with like hormones and stuff you mean or no? Like do yes. people take hormones? Cause I don't know, I haven't gone through it yet, but I hear people ask a lot on my channel when I'm having certain guests on about the hormone replacement therapy. Right. So you didn't do any of that? Nothing, even wow. bioidentical is not bioidentical. Really? Yes, so I never did any of that because you got to think if you were in nature, mm -hmm. what, you, there's no bioidentical hormones for you to buy. You That's know? what I was just thinking. It's not, you yeah, know, you're going through natural. it for a reason. It's not natural then to take all these hormones. Exactly. Right? The <laughs> only thing I was dealing with was these night sweats. And I'm like, oh my God, I hate this so much. It's so embarrassing. And Marcus would always say, you know, you should take my night formula. And he, he'd say it helps with hormones. And I remember it, it didn't, he'd say that a few times, maybe the fifth time he said, it helps with 
hormones. It's like somebody saying, hello, did you hear that? And I finally heard it. I'm like, wait, it helps with hormones. So I took it and dear Lord, did it help with the hormones? It was the first night I slept so wonderfully. So I go, Marcus, I love this product so much. I have to do a commercial about it. More <laughs> women need to learn about this wow. because it was amazing. And I had a girlfriend that um, was complaining about her night sweats and she is a functioning alcoholic. She doesn't eat right. She drinks. And I gave her some and she said, oh my God, the first night. And I was shocked. I'm like, it worked on you the first night? <laughs> you know, usually you think it has to work its way, penetrate through, but this stuff, it, <laughs> Karen, this this stuff is amazing, amazing. So, but it's natural. So this is a night formula? The, yes. Like it, it helps it, you sleep and stuff it, too? It, yes, and it helps, it's got herbs in there that, that deal with the hormones, that affect your hormones in a positive way. And you know, these powders, they've been, people have been using the powders thousands of years, hundreds, thousands, I don't know how long, but to great efficacy, these powders. Our ancestors knew about these powders. So this isn't like, you know, the, uh, uh, the uh, bioidentical hormones, the synthetic. These are powders. So that's what Marcus has in his, mm -hmm. they're just herbs. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, and, exactly. and, and you know, when people say, oh my God, Marcus is amazing. He, his products, what they did to me. And I'm like, listen, it's not Marcus. He's the middleman. Yeah. It's nature. Mm -hmm. Where does he source? Cause I feel like he uses the best quality oh, products. He does. Where does he get he all these has products? He's like, sourcing, going all over the world, sourcing the best products. Marcus is like me. I never met anybody like me until I met Marcus where we do everything Amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, in, in our restaurants, in my restaurants, like the water had he, I, just all this lovely sliced fruit and pomegranates, you know, and fruit infused water and beautiful tablecloths with actual, you know, uh, flower arrangements with real flowers. Then I meet Marcus and his products are really the Rolls Royce of products. Yeah. Everything. It's, so he, he sources the best. He demands the best. What's like his most me. popular product? The green formula. The green, I have that. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And the protein powder is really good too. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody in my gym is on the protein powder now because they notice like it's not like regular protein powders on the market. Wow. Do you have other raw vegan friends at the gym or even here? Do you guys have other raw vegan friends? We're turning them into, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they see you guys and they're yeah. like, okay, <laughs> let's do it. So I'm about to launch um, a group here. I, I live in a gated community and there's older women here and I'm a, the blue zone watching the blue zone inspired this where I am going to on next door. I'm going to put it out after the holidays, after things calm down and I'm going to meet once or twice a month with a bunch of ladies and I want to inspire them nice. to yes, to live their lives. And a lot of them are a little older here. Um, this is an older community. And so this is like the, their perfect target audience, you know? And yeah. I mean, these poor women have gone through, you know, 60, 70 years of their life without even knowing what really, how important a salad is every day. So I'm excited about that. So yeah, I'm about to turn a bunch of women into vegan friends. I love, I love that. You don't have vegan friends, just create them. Yeah. You know, nice. I love that. <laughs> That's amazing. Would you ask her some tips to source seaweed? I can't tell if I'm paranoid, but I'm worried about radiation, but want to incorporate more of these nutritious foods into my diet. Is there radiation? And So since seaweed binds radiation and all, all that, um, but it is more pronounced, he's right, in the Pacific, in, in the Atlantic. Yeah. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. Interesting. And okay, could you ask about oxalate issues and how to solve them? What's your guys' opinion on oxalates? I don't, I, I never even heard of that um, until people started yeah. bringing it up. But. I get people bring it up all the time on my channel. But I have been having kale yeah, me too. And I have Dr. Brooke Goldner on. She's in her protocol. It's like a lot of spinach. Same with her husband for like years and years, like decades plus. And same with all her patients. I don't know. Yeah, decades. I've right? been eating kale and spinach and I've never experienced anything. Uh, my son did tell me, he said, mom, you better careful juicing too much kale because when you juice things, they become concentrated. 
you know, and he's like with the oxalates, but you know, I, we never talked about that. You guys haven't talked about that on your channel? No, no, I know uh, Marcus made a video about it, but yeah. we've never really, uh, we've never sp I've ever uttered oxalates in my life. This is the first time I'm actually saying oxalate except with my son. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because have you heard of people having? I've never heard of, I've never met anybody that's had an oxalate problem. I, I, I don't know either. I don't know why we need know. all these fear stuff. More something to worry about oxalate. <laughs> like uh, like our, our produce, this food is so good for you. They have to find something bad with it. Hmm, oxalates. Mm -hmm. There we go, that's bad. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's fear mongering and maybe people looking for an excuse to not eat healthy food. <laughs> I think that's a fact. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. I think I would agree with that. And is it a good idea to start eating raw if you already have serious tooth decay? Isn't raw food gonna make it worse? How has it been for you over all the years? It's been wonderful. Mm -hmm. As long as you brush your teeth after you eat. Okay. And if they're afraid, they can swish first. Swish, that's what I do. Do you go to the dentist regularly? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's important, I feel like. Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. Any flaws and yeah, what, yeah. what like toothpaste or like what's your, do you have certain products you use? Yeah, there? Marcus did, um, he, he took some, um, tested a few toothpastes to see huh. which ones had high levels of acid. Actually, they had some had higher levels of acid than others, and it's not good to have them on your, on your teeth. teeth, right? Oh, wow, you interesting. Heard. I'll try to link that video down below. It's on YouTube. Uh, yes. Wow. That's interesting. And and um, the water pick is amazing because flossing, it's so hard to floss. People, you know, it's hard. Mm -hmm. And they, it, it's, people are lazy when it comes to that. But that water pick is so amazing. Yes, the water pick. Okay. I, if you don't have a water pick, get a water pick. Because you need, yes. Really? You, yeah, because there is food particles from food in between our teeth. Mm -hmm. And um, flo we don't always floss, and flossing is miserable, too. It's <laughs> miserable to floss. <laughs> but you know what they say, they say floss the teeth you wanna keep. Yeah. You know what I mean? We gotta That's get flossing. True. That's true. Um, somebody said, what is your idea, what are your views on long mono fruit diet? So people who only <laughs> eat fruit, I'm guessing is a big red no. Is that just... What do you think about people who just eat fruit? I, I feel like, I wonder what, what their mind is thinking. You know, I don't understand. Yeah. Like 20 bananas. I get bored of a one banana. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, next food. So I don't know this mono. I get it, it for like a meal or like a cleanse, but it'd yeah, be maybe. hard for me to do like long term because I just want the greens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even people do it long term. Some people do. Some people only eat fruit. Like I know somebody in Toronto, Eli from the Free Melon Society. He's only eaten fruit for like, he'll eat the odd zucchini pasta or salad, but he's been like only fruit for a long time. I think six, seven, eight years. Some people do why, it long term. I just fruit. I couldn't. I don't know, but then that's why I like asking people about that because some people do do it. Is it because they're into the sugar? I, I guess. Wonder. Yeah, and they say they feel best. They think that's the best way, and you know. And some people do it for cleanse, which I get, but I couldn't do it long term because I just, I always crave the greens after a certain amount of time on yeah. the fruit. Yeah. You and yeah. I are so like. You get so much from the greens too. Like they oh, ground yes. you. I feel like the yes. greens really raise you up, yes. but then the greens bring you back. Like they ground yes. you. Yes. What's perfect. We it? are like, I feel like. I love it. <laughs> what is your stance on honey? Well, we heard, I forget if it was this video or the last one about your brother with yeah. the honey. So do you ever have honey or not? I, I sometimes, I, there's a little bit of honey I have in the house for um, the bees. Oh, nice. Yeah, when case I, and it works. And I know you're not supposed to give them some type of honey from this might hurt them. But by the time I find them, they're near death's door mm -hmm. from the pool. Mm. So I'm sure honey is not going to kill. In fact, it works. <laughs> Did you guys have pets? No, right? No. No. I want one. Well, you travel and stuff too, right? Yeah. It's all, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. I get it. And um, I do have my birds. They're outside though. They're free. Exactly. But they all come here to, to my backyard for food. Yeah. Cool. And somebody said, what do you eat from the time you get up to when you go to bed? We, we talked about that. And if you ever get sick, when was the last time you get sick? You don't, right? Oh, no, I don't. But if I do, which I haven't been sick since I met Marcus. And that was just because I, 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 I don't know. What, I don't know why. Maybe it was because I moved to Vegas. Anyways, I would get sick in Chicago maybe once a year. But I wasn't mm -hmm. eating the best food. I wasn't raw or 100% vegan. And not much sun in there. You right. Know. So, man, I would get sick for a week, like everybody does. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if I get sick, it's for a day. What do you do? Okay. Oh, an enema maybe? It, 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 you know what? I didn't even have to get past the enema. Um, it's just so, I, I, I guess it's because I'm already really healthy, you know, and eat clean. But I remember I was coming home from errands. I was so sick, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, I just want to go home and go to bed. But I had one more stop. It was Whole Foods for Echinacea. And I come home and I'm like, oh, Marcus, I just can't wait to go to bed. I oh, got throwing the echinacea in my water. And he goes, here, put a little bit of um, apple cider vinegar. So we put that in and I'm drinking it. And I'm about to say my goodbyes. I'm serious. By the time I finish that, I'm like, oh, my God. Mark is like a doctor. Like, <laughs> he is. Oh, he's like the best real doctor. a life doctor. I mean, like a real doctor. Oh, my God. I, I'm like, why am I going up to bed? I feel fine. Yes. A another time, my, my pinky toe had a problem. I don't know what was going on. It was swollen and red, and it was going on three days now, and I couldn't walk on it. I'd have to hop. And I, I, Marcus and I had just met, and we were going to Kia to get his car worked on. And I said, as we got in the car, I turned to him and I said, Marcus, I made a doctor's appointment for me for tomorrow for my foot. And he goes, ugh, hang on. And he went, he left me in the car. He was in the house for 15, 10 minutes. He comes out with this green drink. I didn't drink it. I drank it. It was disgusting, which I love because that means something's, something's going on. Yeah. Good. <laughs> and so we, I hobble into Kia. I had a flip flop and a shoe. It was winter. And I hobble in and I'm sitting down, you know, and it's like two hours later. We're just waiting for the car. And I'm like, all of a sudden I said, oh, my God, my, my toe doesn't hurt. It, it dawned on me. My pinky didn't hurt. And I go, wait a minute. And I got up. And I walked normal. That's incredible. For the first time in three or four days. And incredible. I'm like, and I looked and it was still red and, and swollen, but I'm like, is he freaking kidding me? <laughs> and I walked to him and I was like really freaked out. It was like a matrix moment with me. I'm like, Marcus, I, I, I've never gone You guys are to, just unreal. Uh, the, I've never gone to a doctor where they actually healed me. And I'm like, are you kidding? You mean there's such thing as actual healing? There really is? I go, Marcus, this is incredible. And it was like the third or fourth thing he's done to me. You know, because another time I had severe food poisoning. Oh. Uh, thank you. And I'm puking. And I'm like, oh, my God, Marcus, and you just go get the car. And I, all I wanted to do is come upstairs and get in fetal position, which I did. And I'm laying in bed and I'm, ah, ah. And he comes up to me 10 minutes later, he goes, here, drink this. And I'm like, oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And by the time I was finished, I go, what the hell was, <laughs> what was that, Marcus? Yeah. Because I, I was done. I, I, I was Unreal. In my real, I ripped the covers off me and jumped out of bed. And I said, what was that? He goes, it's ozone water. It kills toxins in your body. And he I'm must like, feel so good too. When he just I can help you he like, when he it. can help you like that. He does, he's so, he, he doesn't? No, he's it's so not humble. Rewarding for him I, he him doesn't that? seem like, <gasps> yeah, it, it, you know what? Maybe it's, I'm just too yeah, much. No. Like he doesn't have to be. I'm like, oh my God, Marcus. Oh my God, how could you do this? I don't understand because when my father was dying in, in, in UCLA, a football player came in screaming, nurse, he had food poisoning. He was in agony and he was begging for morphine and they wouldn't give it to him. They go, we still need to take tests. And I'm like, all they have to do is, what, food poisoning, turn on the ozone machine, get it going. Okay, sir, here you go. Oh my God, it's all gone. $90 on your way. Thank mm -hmm. you. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. You know, they're keeping this football player of a man and he's dying of, of this pain and food poisoning. And it's like, I just can't believe that, you know, that Marcus to the rescue again. So what was this question? What was that? That initial question was something about... <laughs> <laughs> I forget the initial one now, but I was going to ask you too, like, what are the greatest things you've learned from Marcus? Oh my God, that, that you can heal naturally mm -hmm. and, and the power of enemas and how I actually learned true love. <laughs> you feel like he's the love of your life, obviously. Yes. I, I, like I've never that. nurtured or cared for anybody so much, you know, and wow. he... 
he like, like I've never loved anybody outside of family. You know, I never knew what that was like, you know, and I like, oh, my God, Marcus, I love you like you're a family member, but not one of my family members because mm -hmm, like we're. <laughs> yeah. I love that. So, yeah, I love him. And somebody said, what happened to your brother, Giuliano? He used to be a prominent raw food guru. He wrote a cookbook, had a restaurant, etc. What's he doing now? If you don't mind sharing, you know, I don't know. Not. I don't even know. But he, he lives in L.A. and he is just um, just knee deep in trying to get yeah. his. This movie is so amazing that he's he wrote he he wrote a, he this will be a second movie. He actually wrote a movie before it was called Simon Says about raw food and you know cool. uh, and, and this movie is going to be about the climate and he wants Leonardo DiCaprio in it he's got big plans but that takes a lot of work you know he's got to do it so he's schmooze, schmoozing and working and you know trying to get this movie and then you have a sister too. and he's so persistent yes yeah. so and, she's not raw or she's raw she's vegan oh she is okay. yeah she does her own little YouTube videos Oh, she does? Yeah, cool. on TikTok. Oh, TikTok. Yeah. You're not on TikTok, right? No. We're talking about that. Right. No. no. Is Marcus on TikTok? No. no. It's too much on there, too. It's like, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, this has been great. Thank you for answering everybody's questions and for doing the podcast. I can't wait to make, I think you're going to make a lasagna or something special for yeah. us next. And is there anything else you want to share with my viewers while we're still here? Otherwise, we'll close out. I'll link everything for Marcus and Kara down below. Everything we talked about in this video as much as I can. And the products, the their channel, everything. And subscribe, give it a like, and yeah. Yeah, and reach out to me. You know, I'm... I'm on Instagram. I'm Kara Brotman. And, you know, you can always ask me questions. I try and answer as many as I can. And if, if it hits me properly, I will hold your hand and help you for a while in your time of need because I... That's how I am. I, 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 I'm nurturing like that. And I will do whatever I can to help you and be your cheerleader. Well, that's sweet, Kara. Uh, and I'm not talking about I, for free. I don't charge. I'm saying. For, yeah. yeah. I don't want to say. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. That clear. Yeah. That's amazing. You're so genuine. I love it. Okay. Well, we're going to head up to the kitchen. I'm okay. so excited. I can't wait to try your food. I'm so excited. And I love you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Yes. We love you too. Bye. <laughs>